Hey everybody, welcome back. What we have sitting here is my newest creation. This is going to be uh, part one of two about this tractor that I made, or buggy, or whatever you want to call it. Today I'm just going to do an overview of what it is and how I made it, then I'll give you a video of me driving it around. But anyway, a number of months ago you might remember my video of my Stover CT2 hit or miss engine. And I had nothing to do with the engine, so I decided to make a little buggy or tractor out of it. Someone, a, a club member at Zagray Farm Museum in Colchester, Connecticut, has made two of these, something similar to these. And uh, I took inspiration from him and I built this. So what it basically is, it's my uh, Stover CT2 hit or miss engine, made it onto the chassis and transmission and running gear and everything of a, I don't know, probably like a 60s or 70s wheel horse 800. And pretty much everything else I fabricated or built. I obviously put all the, these uh, wood fenders on, which I gotta say I think they came out pretty well. And I made a wood bumper for it because I didn't want to run in, run into anything and hit the hit the valves against something and break that because that would that would really be unfortunate. And on the wood bumper, my girlfriend painted on some nice pinstriping, sort of uh, reminiscent of the old uh, tractor trailers that had some of this de decorative pinstriping on it, or scroll work. That might be the better term is, a scro is scroll work. But anyway, a little bit of classiness. Now the main drive off the engine is a three-quarter pitch roller chain. I forget how many teeth are on each, but um, as you can see, there's a big sprocket there and a smaller one there, so since this engine only runs at 500 RPM, I had to speed everything up a little bit. But um, three-quarter pitch chain goes onto a, a jack shaft that's mounted on two pillow block bearings. And that goes to a V belt, and that's the rest is just the standard stock um, V belt drive system that was on the tractor initially, with um, an idler pulley for a clutch and or belt tensioner. And uh, on the topic of the clutch, the foot clutch was way too close to the to the flywheel. The foot clutch was right there. So as you see, I made a a hand clutch. It's also a brake to uh, as well. Pull it back all the way, and it breaks and declutches. See, I made a slot in the wood there for the clutch rod to go through. It's a three-speed gear drive transmission. I made the gas tank out of a cookie tin. I soldered on a lid from a metal, some metal can, so I can fill fill it with gas. I soldered all the seams in the cookie tin, and I soldered the lid onto the base of the tin, so no gas would come out. And I made a little rubber gasket here, or a grommet or whatever, and RTV'd that on so the fuel line can go through and no fuel will splash out. And CT2s apparently I are notorious for leaking a lot of oil out of the where the crankshaft comes out of the crankcase. So I have these little wipers here that I made out of just some heavy fabric and a piece of wire that catches most of the oil. And the remainder of the oil that does make it out to the rim of the flywheel before it gets slung off from from centrifugal force and gets on the passengers. I have 
these little uh, squeegees that I made. I used some inner tube rubber and some little piece of sheet metal, and it seems to work pretty well. I made the muffler from a disposable propane cylinder. It's a little loud. I think I might cut it apart, cut it in half, and add a baffle, and then weld it back together to quiet it down a little bit. It's a little bit too loud for my liking. And as I would drive, the water would splash out of the hopper. Cooling, the cooling water would splash out of the hopper, so I made this cover. Uh, and just the cover with a small hole in it wouldn't be enough. Water would still splash out, so I put a tube on it. And with the tube on it, you can't see how much water is in it, so I made a float out of a piece of wood and attached this rod onto the float. So if it's all the way empty on water, the float will be down. And see, it's got a little water in it because the float comes up a little bit, and if I filled it all the way, well, that rod would come up that much higher. So it gives you a visual idea of how much water is in the, in the hopper, so you don't overheat it. I modified the steering column a little bit to take away the, um, the original kind of the dashboard or dash panel that was there on the original tractor because it looked a little too um, modern, a little too fancy, so I made it look a little more basic. And uh, to make the seats, I took a leaf spring, two le uh, pieces of leaf spring, and I bent these uh, combination seats, seat spring and also a bracket to hold the seat back on the seat base or bottom or whatever. So it gives a little bit of spring. They're pretty thick leaf springs, though they don't give too much spring, but the leaf springs were free, so I can't complain. I used three quarter inch plywood for the for the seats, two inch foam and some heavy canvas. I wrapped the canvas around the foam, stapled it, and then nailed on this border of wood to cover the ragged edge of the canvas. And I think the seats came out pretty well. I like them, I'm happy with them. Pretty comfortable. And that just about covers it. Let's give you a walk around here. Last thing, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. These two pieces of angle iron sticking out at the, that angle iron is just what I, I mounted all of these uh, fender boards on. And I'm not sure if I'm going to add one more board and have like a little platform to put gas and oil and water or uh, just cut them off and make it a little bit more compact because this thing is kind of big. That's it for now. That's uh, pretty much all the features of this tractor. And uh, keep tuned and in a couple days I'll show you a video of me starting it up and driving it around pretty fun little tractor. The only thing I wish I did different, but I really couldn't have at the time, is use a throttle governed engine instead of a hit or miss. Because when it hits, it jolts you pretty hard. Then it misses and it's nice and smooth and it hits again and jolts you. But it's really not that bad and the seat soaks up a lot of the shock. But hey, I mean, look at it. You know, it's not a doesn't look like it's going to give you a smooth ride, so it's all right. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned, and I'll show you part two.